another Maximum RT presentation. Okay, folks, uh, Rob, aka Maximum RD, back again. Here we are with the second part of the ColecoVision USB 128 in one multi cart. Uh, yeah, okay, so here, here we have the wonderful ColecoVision system multi cart right there. Just going to insert it all the way. Power is off, of course. Pick up a controller to prepare and turn it on. Now, as you can see, I'm going to turn it back off. As you can see, the second I turn it on, my menu appears. See right there. And I can select through the menu whichever game I want to look at. Now because this looks like crap, I'm going to switch right over to uh, the actual recording of the games and the cartridge in action so we can get a better look at it. Okay, as we jump right into the menu here, the first thing I'm going to show you is how Homebrew uh, can be loaded up on this cartridge. This is by New Coleco, uh, aka Daniel. Thanks once again for immortalizing me in a ColecoVision ROM. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Uh, along with all his other subscribers, but uh, no less, just something great about seeing yourself uh, in a ColecoVision ROM. I've been Rick Rolled and I love it. That's really cool. Okay, enough goofing around. Let's uh, go back to the menu here. And uh, just so you know, sometimes when you press reset on the cartridge, it doesn't take you right back, or it might freeze, but in which case, you just press reset on your ColecoVision. Either way, uh, it gets you right back to the menu. So, But anyways, um, no review would be complete uh, without showing the original pack-in classic game that launched... Uh, with the system and I'm sure moved a lot of ColecoVision systems originally. Um, I'm going to try to replicate uh, a little trick most of you probably are aware of uh, where you can actually skip to the second level very quickly. Uh, it was funny, uh, uh, originally uh, when I first opened my ColecoVision Christmas morning and played Donkey Kong, this was actually the first thing I tried because I remember doing it uh, in the arcade and thought it was pretty cool. Oh geez, usually I do this within the first couple tries. I don't know why. I'm having such a hard time. Let's try again. Okay, anyways. But uh, I remember thinking as a kid, wow, it, okay, there we go. It is just like the arcade game. You know, you even recreated the, uh, the glitch. That was pretty cool. So, anyways, moving on back to the menu here. Now, this one here is my all-time favorite game. Uh, I I just love this one. I love the music, the gameplay, and I would just play and play and play it all day long. Some people say it's nothing more than Dig Dug. To you, I say, bah, you don't know what you're talking about. Because if you played this um, uh, to any extent, uh, you realize it was much, much different than Dig Dug, actually. So, and not taking away anything from the Atari Classic. I love that game, too, but... I couldn't play it as much as I could play this game. I just thought this one was a lot more fun. Uh, to each his own, I guess, but uh, I'm Mr. Do kind of guy. And uh, interesting note, this is one of the very few games that uh, my mother actually got into playing. I was amazed. But I came home one day from school and she was playing this game. And uh, she wasn't just playing it, she got very good at it. She used to beat my high scores on it. I couldn't believe it. And uh, we, we both got so good at this game that it got to the point where it was like, well, what's your score? 10,000? Oh, okay. And then you know, within a, you know, a short amount of time, it was like uh, we would roll the game. Our score would get so high, the counter on the score would actually have to start over again. So it'd be like, well, what's your high score? Oh, I rolled it five times today. Oh, okay. And then I'd have to beat that and, you know, go on from there. So, But it was great. I loved it. What else can I say? Well, as I continue here, um, you know, you got to show David Crane's classic Pitfall game, um, a very good port here on the ColecoVision. This was my exposure to the game. I did originally pay, play the Atari version, but this this was the version that I owned, and uh, 
very nice uh, upgraded graphics of course on the ColecoVision and uh, this is a trick I want to show you here I'm not aware of uh, how many people know I'm not getting killed by a scorpion of course if you come to a wall that's to your left and you keep pushing up against it you'll hear this noise and then if you pull to the right you do a Michael Jackson whoo, and do a moonwalk right through I discovered that early on, and uh, I thought that was pretty cool, and I, I could never re uh, replicate that trick in any other version of the game. So, anyways. <laughs> uh, well, things you find as, as, as a kid, you know. But, um, let's see. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, this is a uh, prototype, actually. If I'm correct, I don't believe this was actually released by Atari Soft. I could be wrong on, on this. If anyone has uh, proof that it was released on, on ColecoVision, please show me. And no cheating. I know there's recently been a homebrew uh, version called the Pac-Man Collection, which is really well done. It includes several versions of Pac-Man. It's like a perfect uh, arcade representation of the game that... Uh, was made recently. This is not that. Um, this is an original Atari Proto of their classic Pac-Man game. So there you have it. Uh, let's see what else can I show you. Um, hmm. Oh yeah, I know. Of course. How can how can I not show you this? Oh man, I played this game so much back in the day. You're a kid. You love Star Wars. You know, back in the day, George Lucas. And you can fight TIE Fighters. And, you know, it's just amazing. It was, it was just, I don't know. I played this game so much back in the day. Lots of fun. The force is missing in this one. <laughs> oh man, just love playing this game. The music was so cool. You're all clear, kid. Uh, I want to go to Tashi Station and pick up some power converters. <laughs> oh man, God, just reliving Star Wars. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I loved it. I loved the arcade game, and then being able to play it at home just blew me away. That was a pretty good port for the ColecoVision. Anyway, moving on. Uh, oh yeah, here's what I love this one. Um, Again, this is one I don't hear a lot of people talk about, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was different. First first thing that grabbed me was the music. <laughs> I just love that tune. It just stuck in my head all day long while I was playing it, after I played it. I just, I loved it. But uh, anyways, you're an art thief in a museum. And uh, as you can see, you pick up keys. You have to watch out for lasers, little robotic uh, sentries that try to... Uh, take you out and uh, conveyor belts elevators um it reminds me a little bit of a uh, keystone capers i guess like on the atari 2600 but uh, it was just different I, I like this one a lot this is a really cool game and again that tune just sticks in your head <laughs> lots of fun yeah it was a pretty cool one anyways Oh man, running out of time, running out of time. Uh, huh. uh, oh, okay, I know one that's uh, not typical. I always like to show the ones that aren't the most typical. This was funny because I remember being, you know, being a young kid back in the day and just thinking, wow, voice synthesis. Well, I probably didn't say think voice synthesis. I probably thought, wow, voice is cool. <laughs> you know, any voices you got in... Uh, early 80s uh, computer games was just astounding so I thought it was pretty impressive but anyways well I think I'm getting pretty close to the end here I'm gonna have to stop recording so once again a uh, big thank you to Stephen J Tucker for an amazing product this and many other uh, projects can be seen at the website www.atarimax.com check it out check out more of his products support him and uh, we can have uh, great projects like this.